this is where we are going to continue in this business of ours until 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 god calls us <laughs> all right uh we are back and let me say what a wonderful way to say thanks to all those who are out there especially those of you who are in radio land thank you you know we conducted our own surveys hmm? and we believe strongly from our core survey conducted it demonstrates how the older folks are in dominance when it comes to face the issues than the younger folks and we'll tell you what our research was able to find out and why we think our research points exactly to what we think is happening which is very much important you know you got to do your own research sometimes in such a to see who are those and what it is the older folks are entombed there are reasons for which they do that and so it's very much important for them politics is not their business realities are their business they've had all in their youthfulness they fought, they've strived, they've done everything they could, and some of them are now bearing farewell. So if you ask most of them, they would tell you squarely, that I don't like to listen to radio normally, but it's just that people like you, when you come on the radio, the way you talk, that's what makes people like us to want to listen to radio. Because you speak to our hearts. You speak to issues that we contemplate on putting out to our younger children. So what the elders are now doing is to teach their children. Now, when you come up on a radio like this, and then you start to propound those issues, the very issues that were there to have the opportunity to sit where I'm sitting here today, they were upset, then they feel like it gels with them. It is part of them. So the older folks, they make it their business about time like this. The women as well. If I tell you the older folks, you will know the women who don't like politics too much. If the, if the older folks, I can tell you say the older folks generation, then you will know how much women who really get in tune to this program, to our programs, because of the kind of way we do our program, that's very appealing to them. It gets to their taste. Because the very things we say are the realities. They don't care about it. For them, they believe that politics is full of trickery. So they don't do that. So they go into the business of understanding. I challenge you. In fact, when we just had a small April Fool the last time, <laughs> husbands were calling and giving testimonies about their wives. Wives were calling and they giving testimony about how their husbands felt about April Fool. And the other folks were the ones that were really calling the most. They were the ones that were even feeling more dejected as a result of that April Fool. Because what we do is about reality. It's not about politics. It's about just speaking the truth. This is the only way that our country will progress. We can't do anything about There is no way to ban about the truth. Remember, it's often said, which is now proving, that the truth crushed to the ground. I mean crushed. You grab the truth, you crush it to the ground, you bury it, it will always strive some kind of way to reveal itself. So that is clear. That is obvious. So the fruit crushed to the ground will always reveal itself. And that's clear. So why will you choose to ignore the truth? Especially when you know we are not saying to be perfect. No, we are saying just speak the truth. The truth of the matter is this. This is what the difference, you don't know the difference between truth and that of the realities of life. If John Brown was sitting right here, 
Though John Brown may have stolen from John Paul, but I did not see John Brown stealing. Eh? I did not see John Brown stealing. And then they asked me the question. A, B, did you see John Brown stealing? I said, no. That no, I'm telling you, is the truth of the matter of what I saw. It does not mean that I am telling you that I'm defending John Brown to tell you that John Brown did not steal. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is the truth and nothing other but the truth. That's why when people are going to courts, especially when you are arranged as a witness, and before you take the witness stands, there is an oath that is administered. All you are going to say there, you're going to tell the court and all those in attendance that whatever you are going to say is to the knowledge, is to your full knowledge and your understanding. And whatever you are going to say is the truth and nothing else but the truth. It does not mean that whatever you're going to say, so let's take for instance, if I decided to use Mary as my witness and say, Mary was there at the time we got there. Mary did not see me taking anything. I brought Mary at with, as witness. They are in Mary. Though I must have taken it before. Even, I mean, I played some tricks, but Mary did not see it. It doesn't mean if I took it, but the fact of the matter is that that thing that Mary is talking about is the truth she is telling. So even tomorrow, we're there to find out and say, oh, that A.B. rather talk that to you. And Mary and all went and stood there to speak. Mary is only telling you what she saw. She saw the fact that A.B. did not take it. That is the truth of the knowledge of what she has said. She is not telling you that what A.B. said that he didn't take it is truth. No. She is telling you what she must have seen. What she knows about. She's speaking to her knowledge. She's not speaking to A.B.'s knowledge. A.B. has told the people that he didn't take it. That what A.B. said. That is his own understanding about what he said. Mary is coming a witness to A.B. to not tell the call that A.B. did not take it. No. Mary is going to say, I did not see A.B. taking it. And that's the truth that Mary is going to be saying. She did not just see me taking it. Does that mean I didn't take it? No. She's just telling you the truth. So, our older folks, like I said, they have all decided to say no. We think that there is hope. We get people in this country whom they will not go the regular way. The abnormal regular way. You see, there is a regular way or course of doing things. It may not be normal. It may be abnormal. But that is regular. Eh? That is regular. That is their regular way of doing things. But that is not normal. Normal people will behave. You know what normal people can behave, right? Yeah, you know how normal people can behave. So that's a different thing by itself. So when we say face the issues in our programs that we have a freedom, many older folks are now into, in fact, many of them getting to understand what they call these political lies people used to be doing around here. They are now getting to deceive for themselves, to understand for themselves what is really this that's going on in my country. Now, if you ask any one of them, and I will give you a testimony. Just the other time, uh, when was it on Friday night? Yeah, on Friday night. Was it on Friday night? Yeah, I think so. We raised an alarm here. They were to drop a terrorist. And we said communities should start taking up issues in And Guess what? It was on yesterday morning when a guy called me from the Moton Corner area. You know what they did? They said, A.B., one Nigeria man get said, we now bust down a whole area. We carry him straight to the police. I said, you're carrying him. You see, the people listen. They followed and they act upon it. And I pray that that guy can yet text me a knee again. Let me get it. I want for him to appear on some kind of platform for him to yet text me again. He said, We the community people, AB, just as you said, I think we went there on Nigeria, man, our play, whole day, he said, drawing guy, part of him being in there. We bust down a whole place. We collected him and we carried him to the police station. As to what happened at the police station, I told him, I said, when you get at the police station, whatever they do with that man, I said, but that ghetto should never get back in your community again. You're resolved on it and let him find somewhere else to go. 
That's citizen's action. That's all we can encourage people to do. It is not about you taking matters into your own hands, but those are your rights. You have a duty to protect yourself. If anybody is harming you, self-defense. Though they have a legal theory they call defense for others, they call it exculpatory theory. That theory in itself may not be too applicable. But if I saw John Brown's conduct is leading to the hurt of other people's children in the community, I can move on John Brown on that theory of defense of others. So, John Brown may not be affecting me personally, but I'm able to employ that theory and then go for John. Because I'm defending other people. I have a duty. I have a duty. If you saw two persons fighting, and you saw one man over the other one killing the other one, and you sat there so poundly and did not think they can hold you. The law can hold you because you had a duty to either report the police or do make certain intervention. You can go in a fight. While that man is choked to somehow, and you think that your intervention may be able to save life, you can go into that fight. Then you can employ that to your defense of others. That what brought you there. Because the idea is, had you not gone there, or life was going to be lost. That is how it is. So I want to say thanks to the older folks, and especially our women. Majority of them, they are women. In fact, they can get their husbands and whatever the noise all over the place, they are there. They're making sure. I did not know this until the April Fool came in. Many of them. And I want to assure you people that because of what you expressed, it has renewed our vehicle to speak nothing other but the truth. We are not saying that what we're saying, I keep telling you, and I will try to explain the difference between what I have knowledge of and what is happening, what I have knowledge about. So it is very much important. So thanks so much to all of you for joining this class, for being in tune to this class. And you can all give a mighty big thanks to old man Sam Simon, whose vision and dream has brought people like us this path so that we're able to do what we think we can together do for our country. It is our country. They said the way you may have bet, are you a ladder on it? They bet of our country, we all will make it the way we want for all to lay down on it. And we'll do it. God is there. God will take us through. The same God. And that's the question. That's the one thing that always comes to mind, the same God. So that is why it is, right? So let's leave that. I will come to something lastly. That has to do with a statement that was released by Linda Thomas Greenfield, which speaks directly in line with what we've been talking. The U.S. ambassador said it. Greenfield came up, and of course she said her own, on a brief, on a brief note. And, uh, and uh, she just said something brief. Uh, I will just try to put up briefly on some stuff then as she said and we'll be able to conclude on that tonight but our first assignment starts with the situation at the Rabos International Airport but thank God the government of Liberia has finally decided to settle that issue once and for all. And it's very much important. The McGill, the Twelve, and so forth here and there. I think there's a major intervention that about to be made at the Rabos International Airport to settle the power outage issue that has caused a serious national embarrassment serious national embarrassment
there are times that when we are faced with issues you want to ask yourself the question how did i get here in the first place because for you to apportion responsibilities i'm not talking about blame there's a difference between blame and responsibilities now for you to apportion responsibilities whether i am responsible for this that happened and i should do something about it whether no matter my effort that i exert whether it will never be recognized because there is something that's supposed to have been done that was not done you see the differences there you get to analyze those what is it that needed to be done that was not done that has made life so difficult for me to move from here to the next level which means that i don't have to start thinking far that airport was built as a security sovereign center for the world war blah 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 all those things they secure the airport and that of the ominga tower that we used to have here the ominga tower they finished bringing it down now those were instruments that were used for the war You know, Labira had been very much a strategic point. That airport was very strategic for the war. Though every country needs its own airport. Years in, years out. This is who we are. This is our country. airport on generator what was the vision you know these current breed of leaders let us start watching them carefully to think and start thinking about those decisions that they will make that will be lasting that will give positive lasting effect to us then for us to celebrate short-term things Instead, we should be able to celebrate something that will be lasting with us for a very lengthy period. What does the future? All right, then, Monrovia that we have here in our building with any future that indeed will have had the kind of population that we have. Look at how the streets are. The sewer systems are all blocked because the sewer systems that they have here, why I say the water, the pipe, then the water, then the, the toilet, then can pass through or whatever. It was not built for the kind of population we have here. So no matter what water and sewer does, the sewage pipes were small. They were not meant for the kind of population that we have here. So no matter what you do, you will still find pipes bursting all over the place because the city was not built to accommodate this kind of group. Was our airport built? to think about these kind of things, especially that we have gone through? No. Then I ask myself the question, what has been the benefits that we have gotten over the period, especially with the existence of people with their investments and so forth? Then my research came. It will look funny tonight. It will sound very funny. I've been hearing about it. I didn't really believe it until today when I heard my girl toy then talking about how they're going to have a huge investment down there to settle the power outage issue and of course the terminal and all they're going to work around it to see how it's better improved and all of that then I begin to do research how did we get here and if they are taking the decisions how guaranteed can it be so that it doesn't appear like it's just for short time so that the next generation of people will try to ask the same question again how did we get here we don't want the next generation to ask that question we want that next generation to just start up from where the vision is because you're just expanding into what people have already prepared for you so you just tap it into it and then you continue that is what life is you will not have to stand at a place and regret and say oh i can not start one because this is starting from scratch for every time we have ourselves facing these problems, there are some of it that we caused as ourselves. That's what we are going through. There are some of it that people caused it. We came into it and we want to solve it. How do we solve it? What action did they take that did not make unnecessary impact or serious impact that lending us to where we are? And how do we take an action that will take us a matter long way that the next generation to come will not have to start 
and be strangulated and say, no, I think we got to start from here. Where, how did these people manage? That is where fast sightedness comes in. Washington, D.C. was a city that was designed by the French. They call it Leron. That city was laid out. Today, D.C. is still, who imagine? Yes! That's vision. Leadership with vision. What is your anticipation? That is why we are building here. We're not building here for this current generation. We think that there are people that become. We are thinking bigger. So if we are going to solve this power problem, we are solving a power problem where tomorrow and we want to increase the terminal facilities. This power that we are having here will be able to solve. We're not going to be increasing it then. We get lower power shut. No, we don't do that. How did we? It looks funny. It sounds funny. It may sound funny to you. Just funny things happen. You know, I listened to former President Ellen Johnson selling when she was throwing some jabs, especially in relation to the Roberts International Airport, and say maybe most of the people that are supposed to come to attend to Sawyer's funeral, they didn't come because maybe they don't know what's happening to the airport because of darkness. <laughs> you know, then sometimes you sit down there, it pushes us towards research. I'm not going far. I'm going just from a period. There was a group that was giving this airport when former president Ellen Johnson Sirleaf then took over. They called them Lucky Martin Group. And of course, they could, they were involved in so, some ammunition stops and things. But whatever it is, that was a relationship she had with them. When that Lati Martin group came to this country to take over the issue of the airport, they had one Ebanks. He was serving as managing director of the airport at that time. An American as well. A man with American background. He too also as well. If you go at the Roberts International Airport, your route leading to the airport, go in Firestone, you will see poles that are poles that would direct you directly that Firestone's hard road. They are a little down there, they call it hard road, right? So that they are benefiting from our waters. It used to supply the Roberts International Airport. Yeah? It used to supply the Roberts International Airport. There was a situation that happened. How RIA got disconnected? The stories that keep coming up. It may appear a bit both social, but it's important. It's very serious. They had one steward who was then serving as the head for Firestorm at that time. This steward man here had a woman in a lady they called oh and i think she should be in country or something like that the managing director for the rebels international airport according to what we've learned decided to have some business doing with these stewards on a personal person in this uh the other woman The man got vexed from Firestone. He disconnected the RIA for no reason. That story had been told for years. Every time I go down there, I see the post, I ask the question until it was today that a cogent person who is very prominent, who's tied and knows about the story, that person said, A, B, whatever is it. In fact, I have got these names. Because for the year, you know, be saying, oh, that woman business, they call the airport of That woman business, they call the airport of That today, I've got to know the names involved in this woman and man business for which Firestone decided to call up the airport. What then 
was the situation? What then was the engagement? Firestone benefiting from Hadro 24-7. We had an airport that very much the capacity was very much small. Look at the kind of terminal that we had. Nothing much was consumed there. But instead of re-engaging with Firestone and telling them that whatever the deals were or whatever it is, we are going to take appropriate actions and so forth, but we think you people are here, we can strike a deal. It can be a win-win situation. That is your done. We agree. That is your hand. We agree. We can step benefit from it. We can stop a deal. We are interested in the power. We want power. Okay, let's leave it. We got waters. First all, planted a down in our waters. Now, if you have future ambition and future thoughts about that airport, that you think that airport tomorrow will grow to a level that India will expand and the capacity will expand, you will start thinking like Firestone and, of course, constructing a dam. All of Mini Hydro, the waters are there. We can create the waterfalls. And that will be exclusive for the airport. Because the kind of terminals we have there, and you're looking in Ghana, Nigeria, you couldn't think that Liberia should start contemplating because while the Chinese are coming here, we don't expect them to bring generators here. No. Generator is no reliable power source. No. Why you think you decided to go to the Montgomery Hydro? You know how many generators LEC hire before the Montgomery Hydro? You think it was stable? The most reliable mediums are what Firestone using today. Firestone don't have generator. That has seen thing they using. So let's agree you never wanted to be with Firestone. Or Firestone cut you off. That should give you a thought to start thinking about the future. That this airport, we are expanding. As part of the deal to get this airport to where it is, that airport there, the terminal down there, they spent 60 million. There are experts who have said that the money that they wasted at that thing that we celebrating, we call it a good terminal. That money is too much for that kind of thing. You have had something built as a power source. The Chinese are able to do that. They will have built it along with that airport just for supply because you have experienced the issue of power to arrows. You know, you rather say the issue was distant, but we get our waters. We could use it. But what did they do? They bought 250 kVA generator. You brought 250 kVA generator to be mounted at that airport after Firestone decided to cut your line. All the donor resources were in this country. In fact, that airport was generating more because why? All males. They are entries and things there in this country. There were people who were just traveling, their families were just traveling, coming. People were just traveling. And of course, there were a lot of investments. People were now coming in country. All that money we collected, what did we do with it? Do we have any future plan to think that we're going to expand the airport? And if we were to expand it, do we think about power source? No. 250 kVA generator was what was there, and all of that was happening. See the number of fuel consumption. Then came the terminal now built by the Chinese. That terminal has a kVA generator that is now put at 1,350. So you think we had hydro? Something mini stuff built down there. You think that airport expansion that the Chinese people brought, you think we're coming to talk about generator, something is hard to come buy a generator? Chinese people won't bring generator for all the... No, 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 no. We're not thinking about generator. We ran airport on generator. Most of you have generator in your homes. You know how unreliable a generator is. How you got the recurrent expenditure gets so high. Just for men and woman business, airport was caught up. No problem. What were we now thinking? 
how do we get back to Firestone? Talk to them. They connect us back to the electricity grid. We continue to use it. Or we had an alternative plan. We are country, man. Our whole company will get that kind of thing here. Then we, as a country, we can't get our own to in our own what kind of, what kind of, what kind of thing? Whole country. We have a company that says, we get our thing. We will cut you off. We cut you off. Then we, as a country, we're not able to say no. This thing will build it right here. We'll use our sea water and we'll generate power from right here exclusively for our airport. In fact, there are future plans that we have to expand the airport. So the little power we have here, say it's still plenty. We engage some power then to charge view people. Do people there around there. All of this to get you ready to see So that when these Chinese people were to build this thing, you're not going to be telling them to say, you bring generator for it to come be right here for it to be passing around. No, 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 no. In fact, were you to even bring generator as an idea, you just say, Jeff, yeah, stand back up. Chief, that's fast sightedness. When Ellen then ready to speak, let them speak to what future did they build for this country with all the time that they were here. Did they really, you know, when you want to speak to the future of this country, tell us what you have done today and how long that thing that you have done, how long it will take us. It's not just short term thing. How long will it impact us as a people? If men and women business, they call your land, what do you do? If you really vex, you have to settle it. You have had something down there. Our airport today will not come to be on generator. The issue of generator is not management problem. It's about lack of leadership that has engulfed this country in time past that haunting us all today. You got an airport that is running 1,350 kVA. You have pretty close to 1,400 because you get 700, 700 synchronized one that also there on the other side. Then you get that. That, that's a different generator by itself. I'm talking about the airport only. This one is 1,350 kVA. Then you get 700, 700 generators, 700, 700 kVA generators, synchronized. They put it together. So it's about 1,400. All of those, the Liberia Airport Authority has to look for pretty close because it's consuming about 8,000 gallons in four days. In four days, 8,000 gallons of fuel. Thirty-seven thousand will have to be looked for in four days. Thirty-seven thousand US to be looked for in four days, so that airport will run. See the kind of thing because without fast sighted, you see the kind of expenditure we can put ourselves in. The thirty-seven thousand in four days. Calculate it and see within a year how much dollars we spend. On just fuel consumption at the airport. And if you are to calculate that, you don't think it's able to contribute immensely towards water energy. You don't think so? You solve that problem. Quiet. <laughs> that's that's why we, when we say when you are five sighted, that's why it is. Today, we're discussing generator and we want to brag about it. Maybe what happened to the generator? You still think it's a sound thing that was done? A big airport like the one you say you have built. You get two generators. You get generators running it. The airport there. When you get Firestone teaching you how to manage your own resources. You think a Firestone were to be buying diesel for all of the time. You think they are robber then they were coming to profit, profit anything from it. But they look at it. In future investment, they say we have come here to stay. And remember, that's what fast Saturday is all about. We have come here to stay. And we're not going to depend on generator to run this company. No. So, as part of these people's stuff, we'll get their water, we'll use it, and then we'll, we'll build our own little app that we'll get power from to supply ourselves. That's how fire some operating. So what a few price go up? What about it? No, no, no. They are not worried about that too much. All the 
knee is water. Simple people. Why Liberia will be blessed with all these things that we there passing around? What, what kind of country is this? You see, when you get people who have vision and think that the thing that we're doing today, we're not doing it only for today. We are doing it for five, for 50, 60, 70 years to come. That's what we are doing it for. So that the next generation now can they not got to come spend money on it one again. They will just continue going. So the government coming to take very close to I think about 40 or something million now to say they're going to solve power problem down there. Why are they going to solve here? You think that money that they're using now, we wouldn't have gone in front with different development. But we got to turn now to condemn everything at the airport there because we want to solve the problem. So we are condemning all of that. Pumping resources are supposed to take us ahead. Instead, it is taking us behind. And we got to start as though there were no people there first. Well, you know, Liberia has money, but the utilization has been very poor. People don't have any vision for this country. They don't think about this country. They think about it now. What can I do now? Because I know my own power coming to be over, so I'll go about my business. I don't care about who will come and take over that they own a problem. They don't want to manage that one. It's not my business. That's the short-sighted decisions they make. Short-sighted decisions. And guess what? It also affects them. Because the way you may have bet the how you will let her on it, right? Good. They are still here in this country. Some of them, their relatives want to come. But because of airport dark, that problem. Everybody will feel it. That's why when you are doing things, you think. And think about it and put yourself into other people's shoes. Don't just think about yourself now. Because when you do that, you will be blindfolded with the thought that you are okay now. Think about other people. Grab them. Capture them into that decision that you are about to make. Think about it. What will end me where I to be in the position these people are in today? And that decision I'm about to take today, how would I have felt it affecting them? Put it into someone's shoes and put yourself into that person's shoes. Then you take the decision. When you take it, my brother, my sister, or whoever, you will never receive any backlash as you may get were you to think personal about your current status. Got tomorrow? The possibility is this that you're going to end up like that person. And the way you make it, how you live with it. There are former lawmakers who are suffering here today because of poor decisions they made. They had opportunities. They didn't make those decisions right. Then Ellen then say, I wonder what happened to the airport. What happened to the airport, man? Sorry to just remind you. When people are in power and then they are short-sighted and then they leave, that sake is cut off. You will find these kind of problems. Generator is nothing tangible for this country to be on. Big country like this, so it'll be running on generator, yeah? No. Yeah, Akosomo down and Africans then they get ready to enjoy their power. Ghana, they're all fighting and all and doing their best to get there. Several living there. Then we own generator. That was just a quick fix solution. So we never think about long plans. If I asked who is teaching us, they are managing the ass and they are benefiting power source from it. Why we couldn't do the same for the airport? And think about the expansion of the airport and make it bigger. Or did we never ever have any dream or vision for that airport? Is that what we're saying? So those generators are only brought there for that airport alone. The presidential launch that they're about to complete, that different generator you're going to buy again and put to that other launch. You see, this is, I don't know what kind of country that we are you. So the presidential launch that they're about to complete at that airport, you will buy a different generator for A again and put it because that generator was only built and the Chinese people calculated the power capacity down there and only say they are terminal, now what that generator for. So you need to buy different generators for different, different compartments and things down there. 
the control tower then need their own generator the other one need their own generator so we can put all of that together and just build one thing that will start to supply everything what's the big deal about thinking right my people how far is from managing all the years they've been in this country they yet they say passing around what kind of country is this When institutions are personalized and not institutionalized, that's when you face these problems. And we know them. Look, it's good that you know these things, especially those children who are sitting here at the radio and listening. Tomorrow you are a leader. Think about it. There is no leader who comes to office without thinking about leaving a legacy. And that legacy, you don't want it to just be short-sighted. No. You want it to stay long because you're going to live with it. They say a good, bad a man does, he or she, or whatever man or woman does, that lays after him or her. You want to be passing and then you see, wow, this is what I built. Wow, I think I really did well. Look, those are things that will remind you about your success that you may have scored. When you are gone, what do we remember you for? Life is all about service. We've come in this world to serve. A leader who leaves behind no lasting legacy. I don't just say legacy. I say lasting legacy. That leader was a failed leader. Or is a field leader. When that legacy is not lasting. Because some will say, oh yeah, you, leave, you don't just leave behind legacy. You leave behind lasting legacy. Just most recently, the airport, they have to buy another brand. We got a generator we own now. So when other generator, they start giving for you got to buy a new generator. <laughs> You see how we see how we are very wasteful because of poor leadership, lack of vision. I don't know whether it's whether it's intentional that they do these things. You see the kind of expenses that we put ourselves into. We got to go buy a new generator. What kind of country is this? People do these things today. That is the same way Madame Seri Song Football Club has. In fact, Segu Kana took a left BYC and gave it to Rao Seri. Rao Seri BYC was the biggest club in Tanya. When his mother left, BYC died. That is the personalization of institutions. When institutions are personalized, when those persons leave, the very thing, the thing that they have built over the years, it collapses. It collapses. Because you've personalized it. It's around you. That's your thought. So when you leave, it's gone. They built ministries and agencies and institutionalized. Instead of institutionalizing the running of those ministries and agencies, they personalized the running of those institutions and the agencies. That means, if our Abraham William was appointed by President, we are to go to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. All the budget land will go to Ministry of Foreign Affairs because President, we are like me. He's not sending money to Foreign Affairs because the institution needs money at our Foreign Affairs. No. He's sending it there because ABD are his friend. They don't see that it is the institution that needs that. That I am only privileged to sit there. So the entitlement runs with the office, not with the individual. But in Liberia, like during those times, I don't know what is happening now. We'll say SS here. The entitlement runs with individuals. So, if you took John Brown from here and you brought Paul here, the entitlement John Brown used to get, Paul would not get it because the entitlement runs with the individual. It does not run with the institution. So, you see the difference? You see how we do things in this country? Because we individualize everything. We don't institutionalize it. When you institutionalize things, 
the institution remains. Remember, individuals are dynamic people. We change. We we'll move from place to place. Institutions have longevity as compared to individuals. Individuals will be able to leave institutions behind. Some of them will die while the institution stays. That's why you invest in institution. That's why you institutionalize your investments because that is lasting. You know, some people just ate their own from that airport there. They said that 60 million. Who will audit it to know what are that 60 million airport there? Who knows? What are that money, that 60 million? Who have you sold it pretty close to 4 million or something like that ticket from there or 5 million? Or maybe 10 million and say we're going to build it down exclusively. That thing will have supplied that airport and even additional airports because we'll be telling the port that there may be expansions. We'll be able to expand the terminal. For the one you're building now, that's it, but we'll let you expand it. So we just need to build something for our power generation. The same thing Firestone has. We need that too. Because if a big company like that can be operating the way they will get big, big. You have gone to Firestone production sites. Oh, you'll see the kind of big, big thing that they get there. They are by far bigger and more power consuming as compared to the airport. But yet, they are running it. Production on course. Why were we not thinking? RLJ and all of them down there are supposed to be renting from you. Power. They're supposed to be paying to you. You generate money from there. You know, this country is quite an interesting country. And I always said it. By the way, into the wise is quite sufficient. We can stop on that. So that whole man, woman, business thing are true. The wildfires to cut their whole power from us. And they're not giving it back. Because the net deal now they were coming up with now, from what I understood now is, fires is saying that if they will give us power, if they will give the airport power, if they will give Labrador power, they are thinning that they bring it in country, there must be some... I don't waver, duty free. You know, fires can bring in more things. So there must be duty free stuff then. But the library people want the money. Eh? That, that was the next thing that they brought. They said, We'll reconnect you. We're not getting a problem with reconnecting your boat. When we're bringing our thing there, it will be duty free. They said, No, we want the money. You know, like, bro, men like their cash. They want for the money to be in their hand to put it in their pocket. Already, they're not going institution, they're going there. So they just look at it for a lot. They say, No. Be paying all the money. We'll buy a generator. We'll buy a generator and put it there. So don't do it. I mean, to settle that whole thing now. Any then when they talk to fire to fire to the only way it will be able to work is say you allow us to what they call. Yeah, they say no. You're one of the biggest companies that can bring internet in the country. And they can say we're gonna get for what? GTA freeway. I beg you. That the money we want. We want the money. Ellen had her relatives sitting right at Firestone there, eating food every day, working, everything. They get a government religion office there that the place they were sitting there and they control all the kind of thing there. It was in the best interest of the Labyrinth people. Today, you're talking about how generator. I don't know how the airport may be generator. But I'm saying, you're not supposed to leave generator with us. You're not supposed to leave generator with us. Firestone taught you how to run an institution or company without generator. That's what you're supposed to leave with us. That system million is too much for that kind of thing. So if you really look at experts' opinions and things, that system million they say they spend on it. You know, we are so mumu there now. We don't know anything. So yeah, look at oh yeah, the airport found oh, this now that we have system million there. Oh, what they call yellow there? We will have had a mini hard room that will supply us in the city when we come to expansion. It will control everything under the control tower, everything down there. In fact, surrounding communities who are supplying them with current or as part of their social corporate responsibility, uh so corporate social responsibility, who are benefited from it, who are supplying them. Airport one generator. Then we're just sitting there, we're talking all kinds of things here. Yeah, you could put some parts on generator, no problem. If you think what you call it, power something, yeah, but not cut terminal on generator. I beg you, man. You know, we got to be far sighted. And whatever intervention, I'm saying this because whatever intervention, the Miguel, the toy, and whatever you want to make, you're not going to do it like the old order. If you ever want to solve that problem, 
now now said they get solar plate solar panel that was some airports are using now in australia and other countries we got some yet yeah. we got solar plate that thing and maybe on the rain for the water but let you down you can have lasting solution to that thing there so that the workers will be paid because the workers not been paid on time because of the power consumption how do they get paid don't we know there are people who get their own evil deeds then they can do their own collection and thing that will honor the interest of the ordinary workers but let's leave that one from 250 kva generator to 1350 where you get 37,000 or some more to pay every four days that's more money there you leave us with bread to bear mr president whatever solution you want to put down there the reason i'm identifying the flaws within the past administration in what they ought to have done that they did not do so that it will enlighten you today that whatever decision that you're going to make at an airport whatever control that you're going to put that power situation on it should not be as short-sighted or short circuit something as it was done in time past it should be lasting that is lasting legacy that we look forward to see mr president the reason i went to the past i didn't go there to shave bling i went to tell you what ought, what were possible to be done that did not happen that brought us this far you got to know that so that whatever you intend to do today will not take the next generation back to say ah, but what are the people then were thinking here you have to be very careful so a hint to the wise is quite sufficient Sixty million project just go in breeze. Now that thing you're seeing down there, so the thing they pour around that thing that zinc, real high class zinc. Now what they pour around that thing there, so sixty million were told. That's what they spend on that airport. Just Google yourself a system million airport. I tried it last time. See some terminals. It will tell you what a system million terminal is. I mean terminals that you're not going to put generator inclusive. I said terminals. We are terminals. 60 million. Check it out. And see that thing down there. In fact, we haven't gone anywhere yet. Some of the components are now damaging. So according to what we are hearing from twelve again whatever then they say they're trying to make sure that they refurbish everything could you imagine airport that we just built terminal that we just built some of the bridges are now terrible some of the equipment are down there they've been for years nothing has changed oh oh ratin ratin thing that can go tell people goods there and there. even boss here and all boss they bear all and do some of those machines can do their own study and all that are all old machine then that they get to the airport there it been there but we spent 60 million. We did not car, we did not buy the kind of equipment that will commensurate with the new terminal. 60 million went in breeze. Today, we hear about the government wants to invest again. We are watching, Mr. President. Yours should be lasting. If others were not lasting, that which they were, they were not lasting, and they are not lasting because the impact that we are feeling now is too negative to be called a lasting legacy. We want lasting legacy. Tomorrow, you and your group will leave power. We want the next people to come to not be thinking about airport. They want to think about different things. The more other thing I will say, okay, you know what? Uh, we're going to add additional terminal. No, we're not going to build any terminal here now because we think it's this. We will now look for a different place to go build. And it will invest in any aviation related issue like airport. It shouldn't be we are investing because we are going back to correct what we did not, what previous people did not do. No, that's not the kind. That's what we call backward investment that's backwardness you're looking at a facility that will be used use use you the word and tears will always be and you have no tangible investment there they are saying waiting for the letter city something to come from Aurora to pass through the CSU it will come from where Africa to the people who not done come and supply us here they will get it. Labrador like, even owing Africans now. Who imagine? Look at that shameful thing. We owe him. Send no power then came. You see the poor country there? It's going on good. 
we stay owing, but we get water here too. Firestone using the water to benefit though. <laughs> what kind of country they are so the people using the water to run their company is we say we're not using the water we'll buy a generator we'll operate with it right here because we want to steal out of the time a friend of mine talk over at the ministry of defense I will not call the name of which one is specific one. BTC Barrick. All the 12 years that they were here, BTC Barrick. I mean, the Ministry of National Defense, Honor Branding Summer Garden, it was running with generator. You know why? Because they wanted a few slips. They wanted a gas slip. It was Daniel Zianka who took over as defense minister and said, ah, when we look at the fuel consumption, look at the barrel right here. Yeah, AEC right here to ATS. ATS people 14 to get AEC. Then we right here, we can get LET, military barrack. We stay on generator. Why would we be on generator? Those guys prefer using generator because they were eating the gas slip. You see, the criminal activities in this country for our official, these things are intentional. The BDC was on generator to, oh, AI used to enter the barrack. You used to see the, AI used to see the wire, then it caught, caught. AEC was here. They said, we don't go for AEC, we'll use generator. Because somebody wants to be eating a few. So that generator. How is that possible? The first thing the only company is able to get an for what get it? Gosh. You know the thing can be true that kind of way when you get some of the stories. You get to wonder whether. People really get a country at heart, or they just get the resources to exploit the resources from this country and go by their business. Today, they want to be here as heroes, coins. That's why when they leave the stage, everything they ever built crumbles because it was never built with the intent of its lasting after they are they are stay in power. That's why when they leave, everything goes down. That's terrible. I'm speaking to you young leaders who want to step up tomorrow. What do you do? What is that legacy you will leave? Lasting legacy. I didn't say just legacy. But lasting legacy. And tomorrow when you are gone, you yourself in your old age will stay, see that your name is still written into our books and others. Today, today, you asked about our airport, early build terminal. So what? What do you have been doing? How tangible it was? Airport had a generator, 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 all the way, and that's for all the equipment. You manage generator, said that was for all the equipment, and because the Chinese know they would never run a terminal with generator. They themselves in their countries, they know that one. Everywhere. Generator. Airport. That's supposed to be on 24-7. The only international airport. We didn't invest much in the 60 million went in Breeze. We couldn't build a mini. And then just to supply the airports. But today we got to say, government there had to be announcing that we'll come and put the whole thing under control. We got to do it. Yeah, I got to do it. Got to do it. Don't play the mess. That's the same corruption that we've been talking about that started back then and even up to today. It continues. That's why we lend us now finally to uh, uh, this one that Lena Thomas Greenfield said again. The same corruption thing we've been talking. And that's what she said. She said, reading SS by the readings, just in case you missed. It. And that's what she said. And that's what she said. There is something that has she come to Liberia, she was going to say the same thing, but she did not come. He said, Liberia, like the United States, is far from perfect. She said that. She said that. And I've always said it. I said, 
there's nothing like America being different. Look, we are all humans. Humans are corrupt. We we'll always get a corrupt nation in us. Where's in us? But what happens when people are caught is what that sets these people apart from us. There are people corrupt in America. There's something different. And she said it. She said what? Liberia, like the United States, is far from perfect. Especially now. And for Liberians listening, I said this as true friend of Liberia. This is what she said. And Liberians know me for being that friend. Liberia has a serious problem right now. She said, she said Liberia had always had. She said, serious problem right now. Let me this now. And this is where now I want for president. We are in this entire team to really listen to what she said. And that's talking on the number of issues. Foremost among them is the issue of corruption. Liberia has a serious issue right now. That's what she is talking about. So we don't put him up to Ellen Johnson's Selene Dental now. The one I just told it was Ellen Dental that I was talking about. But the one that she's talking about now is now. She said the foremost thing that everyone is talking about. Madam Banks talk about it. Ambassador McCarthy talk about it. And everyone else singing the same song for Liberia. Corruption, corruption, corruption. And this is an issue that we are seeing across the board. That means everywhere. It doesn't have to only be in government. Everywhere corruption just all over the place is eating up our society. It's quite terrible. It's growing by the day. Something has to be done. And that's why she said it is across the board. Not just in Liberia, but in other places as well. It's affecting every society. But what she said. And for me, corruption is an act of robbery. You know what armed robbers can do? They steal away your belongings, what belongs to you. So that's what corruption does. It takes away what belongs to the people. That's what she calls a robbery. She said plain and simple. She said corruption is a robbery. Broad day robbery. The people are robbing you. They are stealing from you. What you own is what they are taking and putting into their pockets. That's what robbers do. Armed robbers, what they do is they go to take your belonging. What that is not belonging to them is what they take. They forcibly take it. That's robbery. And that's why she said this is plain and simple. She said it's a cancer in our societies. You know what cancer does? It eats up. That's what she said. In our societies. It is government stealing from the people of Liberia from the mouths of the children. When governments come, they steal from the people of Liberia and then from the mouth of the children. I mean, what they're supposed to eat, they take it away. This is what language they are speaking out there. It takes away access to health care. Is it not the same language Banks spoke about? You see, all of them, they get the same tune. It takes away the access of health care. It denies citizens the right to public safety. Is there not the same thing that people say? They're not the same language that all the Japanese. It stops young people of Liberia from getting the education they deserve. Certainly, 100%. But she also told you from the onset that her country is not perfect. But take action. I think that all she's talking about here. She said it takes the future away from them. Certainly, everything she has said, truth. Nothing other but the truth. It takes away the future. What future do we have? You know, they're sitting here talking about the airport. People grab money, they eat it. They never build any future. Today they are gone. We are living with a mess that they build down there. They call airport with generator there giving all problems. Then they want to use that situation to talk about it. it. takes away the future. What is that future we have? Instead of all taking that money now and investing it into different future to better our lives, we now come to take it to put it back into airport that was already spent on. What kind of thing that's so? That's what corruption does. It takes away the future. It eats it up. It prevents the country from having the healthy business environment that it needs to lift Liberians out of poverty. You need business before you can lift Liberians out of poverty. How do you get that happen? When everyone else wants to get their courts before they can do business with anybody. When Lebanese will be caught doing the bad things, the moment you catch them, 
Somebody will call from somewhere and say that my own man there leave them against the interest of their own citizens. What is that a healthy business environment that will make people to think those are terrible things? Those are the corrupt attitudes that she's referencing here. It denies Liberia a place in history. Certainly. People should be referencing Liberia now. And say, look at Liberia. Liberia, look at country in the Rwanda there. Tanzania, then we are referencing them as historical country then, uh, that can preach to history. Why we can't reference ourselves and give history to ourselves? Why people can't reference us? Anytime people want to do Baba thing, I hear they will come. Any company that they chase out of Ghana, they will say we want to settle in Liberia. Any Lebanese that they chase from other countries, they will tell them say we can make it in Liberia. They chase Ghanaians, Nigerians who are criminals in their own country, they say in Liberia we can be accommodated there. When they chase them, I mean, from their own countries, they kind of terrible life and kind of criminal activities they want to be involved with. The moment they chase them from their country, they say, Liberia, we can't forget it, we can make it there. This kind of life we can live in, in Liberia. Because this is where people protect criminals and shield them. We got to stop it. This is to us all as Liberians, not just government, in other places. Like she said, she said, corruption is a democratic killer. It kills it, certainly. Because the people don't have their free will. They are subjected to do according to what you do because you deprive them. So they are just, so that is not democracy. And we cannot have that in a place like Liberia. She said that. And we cannot have that. She said, which we are counting as our bulwark. bulwark of Africa's democracy. They said we want to take Liberia as the fulcrum of Africa's democracy because we know how it all started right here. Liberia should be second to America. If it should be little America, they will say American people like themselves and they love their country and they jealously protect their country. Liberia should be second country in West Africa to be jealously protective of our own because we were born out of the belly of America. That's why when they set up the first set of government here, they put in charge their own people who could teach us the stars of sense of oneness and of course entitlement. And protective of that. That even were they to do bad things to us, we would know that indeed we went through slavery. How will I come through suffering and allow myself to suffer again? That's what I pray to God all day. All the suffering I went through, God, may I not do anything that will take me down there again. That is what you do. You went through slavery on purpose. That was a teaching moment for you. When you said you wanted freedom, you wanted to stand up for your rights, to protect those rights and do the right things. Not just fighting for rights, but doing something with that right. So that the right things, people will see it. And that whatever you may have acquired, whatever you may have learned from them, you say we can do it better and with us we can do it. That's why when we crafted the constitution, we said nobody who is a white man will come here our country because we we're telling them that we could run our own affairs. We we're telling them that we can do without them. Today, that clause is useless in the constitution. That racist clause is useless in the constitution. Yet these people, without them, we cannot make it. That was why we placed that in our constitution. We said we don't want white people to come out here to come control us. We can manage our own affairs. Can we? Have we? Are we? No, we are not. That's us. Yet we are crying on one another. We got to run to the same people and say, oh, please can I help all? I want to do the thing here to all. Ah, I told you I said you want freedom to go on your own. In fact, you're looking at your own constitution. You said we the white people, we shouldn't come back here. You can't be even citizen in your country because when we come here, we can't take over, and we don't we don't want that. You will be able to manage your own affairs. Why are you crying on each other again? You're coming back to us. You see the shameful thing. Why we can't take that thing from the constitution once and for all? Because that's the reason we put it there. Thinking that we could be on our own, we could do it on our own. We're tired from suffering. That we could stand up for ourselves, stand up for each other. And she continued and said to me. It is the most present, it is the most forward-looking challenge facing Liberia today. It is frankly one that we need to work on. 
It is frankly up to the leadership of Liberia to fix it. Certainly, we've said that over and over. Mr. President, it's up to you guys to fix it. Anybody who's not in the interest of your pepper bush, Mr. President, they shouldn't be your friend. You know, one thing Jesus Christ told his parents when he was a boy who grew up and went missing from their eyes, and then they begin to pretend that they own, not pretend, but certainly that is why it was, especially traditionally, customarily, that is why it is. They begin to go passing around looking for Jesus Christ all over the place. Then somebody went and woke up and then go tell Jesus Christ, your mind and power looking for you. The kind of team respond that he gave, it may appear cheeky, but that was the reality. He said, who are my parents? That was the question he asked. Who are my parents? Then he answered himself and said, anybody who does the will of the one that sent me, my father, that person is my father, that person is my mother, that person is my brother, that person is my sister. Mr. President, were you to just tell these people who are around you, say anybody, who does the will of these Liberian people who send me? You will be my friend and you will work in my government. If you don't do the will of the people, I will take you off. That's a clear message. Simple as it is. These people are thinking one to me. I don't want to go follow in reading what she said because she also referenced what McCarthy said. She said again, thank you for the question. Because there was this question that was actually was saying, Ambassador Makate has voiced his uh, anger with corruption and mismanagement in Liberian government. Is the U.S. going to further put pressure on the administration figures? That means Makate has been speaking. Look, this current ambassador, you know why he has started now? Going from villages to towns and places to go. They may on a mission. And the main mission is to rescue Liberians from corruption. He's not sitting down in his office. He's an ambassador accredited to the Republic of Liberia. He said that. He said, not just ambassador accredited to Monrovia. Ambassador accredited to the Republic of Liberia. I will go from wherever I think I can reach. I will reach there. Let me hear the people out. Let me see their living conditions. Let me see it for myself. I'm not going to be one ambassador here. Hold them here. The president will pass me around. This happens. No, no, no. I'm going to the villages of town and see these people. So that if my people should come here and help, I will know how to advise them on which way to help the people because I have seen for myself. That's why he's here for his ambassador. That man is passing around. And, said, and she said, she said again, thank you for the question. And as you saw prominent in my own remarks, where my concerns about corruption. And I know that Ambassador Makate has been raising these concerns directly with the government officials as all of the previous ambassadors regardless of when they were in Liberia. This is not a new problem for Liberia, but it is a problem that I think is more prominent now because of the impact that it is having on the country, given that you have just gone through a panic, a pandemic, and we are dealing with all sorts of consequences. She said, this problem is not a problem that is unique to Liberia now. But for now, I think it needs serious attention now. This is what she said. She said it yet. But it is a problem that I think is more prominent now. That means it is more prominent now because we have just gone through pandemic. Economic recovery. Those are things that they are thinking about. Again, the voices are the same. And Mr. President, let me remind you of something. Listen to former President Charles Gangeti. There is something he said. When these people are speaking like the way they do, and you don't listen to them, you could be headed for trouble. I would not know if it's a wrong, but one thing that I was not able to accomplish that I wanted to accomplish was after the war, the Liberian people elected me. In fact, the Liberian people elected me to unite the country. I was not able to get some of the other factional leaders to return to Liberia. 
I was not able to get one or two of the political leaders to uh, to return. And I think they helped to provoke the situation. I was able to do a whole lot. Now, strangely, uh, the LPC, these were all warring factions, uh, and all of the other warring factions, I was able to bring them into government. In fact, most of the combatants that fought for the government during the war were the combatants of the warring factions that fought against me. So I accomplished bringing them together. I accomplished making sure that the issue of tribalism went away in Liberia. But I mean, to a great extent, I think most Liberians now, if you went to Liberia and took a poll, they would say Mr. Taylor did his best. Any other regrets? The second regret is that uh, I was never, never able to, to get the United States to understand me. I, I was never able to, to get them to work with me, which is so essential for Liberia. No president of Liberia, no president can make it successfully unless he is online with Washington. Now, I am not the type of guy that you can pick up a telephone and, and command. I, I don't take that. I didn't take that from Washington. Then, even if I were like the president, I would not take it. I'm not that kind. I'm not a coward. But I do believe that a good working relationship is essential for any president of Liberia or that he is online with Washington. Now, I am not the type of guy that you can pick up to stand me. I, I, I was never able to, to get them to work with me, which is so essential for Liberia. No president of Liberia, no president can make it successfully unless he is online with Washington. Now, I am not the type of guy that you can pick up a telephone and, and command. I, I don't take that. I didn't take that from Washington. Then, even if I were like the president, I would not take it. I'm not that kind. I'm not a coward. But I do believe that a good working relationship is essential for any president of Liberia or that president will fail. Certainly, that president will fail, Mr. President. Not just or a core. And of course, just somebody who sat in the toughest of seats, the toughest of moments, is now saying just no president. You see every these people saying this thing over and over, it's not time you call your cabinet meeting. You have to tell them that you have called your cabinet officials, you've talked with them, you tell them the issue of corruption, you're not going to condone it going forward. The people should know that why they should look, Mr. President. Uh, before I get to the lines and interact with these callers quickly, let me tell you how the people do their stuff. You know, people were arguing the last time and saying, Oh, yeah, the American people bring proof. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Who told you they would bring that other proof? So let's take, for instance, right? I sent Mary on a surveillance to go and check on whether. John Brown is prompt to bribe, or John Brown can receive bribe. Because people say John Brown can receive bribe. Let's say go there with this. Mary is a briber. And I know the law states that the briber and the bribe, once ever they are caught, but of course. But Mary's intent for going down there is not to go and bribe. That is not the intent. She's going there to unveil the capacity of John Brown who can receive bribes in his position. So if Mary went and Mary was successful and John Brown held that bribe, and Mary came right back to me and told me, you think I'm going to expose Mary and say that Mary, you did it? Well, no, I would just say John Brown. Now what the American people can do? They're not going to tell you who did what. They know how you did what you did. Who did you do business with? Some of the people you do business with are people they send. You don't know. You're doing business with them. They don't, they, they, they don't care to come expose those people to you. So if they tell you, say, we grab the other person, we designate the person, the person is in criminal activities here, they're the person receiving bribe, and of course, hurting the Liberian people, they have already done their background check. They have it on you. And they will confine you to their laws. You know, one time we were in one of our classes, and they said conspiracy class. Now, the issue of a conspiracy, for a conspiracy to take place, the two persons, the most important thing is that the two persons who will be involved as conspirators, they should, the co-conspirator, 
should be somebody who was involved in the planning execution is not an issue the planning so i'm sitting here austin kawa comes he plans with me for us to go and dupe old man sensei austin does not go at the duping area to go do the duping i abraham we are alone went there to go do but if i discovered that austin kawa was with me austin kawa cannot claim that he was not a conspirator because he did not involve himself in the duping he did that so let's turn it the other way around austin was called by old man sam i said go to ab i want for you to know what ab is capable of doing austin comes we plan together austin decides that we're planning together even to the extent that austin may even follow me into the area where they're going to do the duping what we're going to do the duping or we're going to do the robbery and then they cut us there Austin is not a conspirator. Eh? Austin is not a conspirator. Austin position down there is to raise an alarm, and he has raised an alarm, and it's clear. So the only thing was we needed evidence to catch AB that indeed he's somebody who can rob. They all wanted. So Austin comes and then tells us that this is SYZ that AB is planning to do. So we say, okay, say you're planning to do and you think you will plan it with you, you're going to plan it together. At that point, the plan that I'm going to do with Austin, that is not a conspirator plan. No, Austin is not conspiring with me. No, it's intent. Because the, you have a conspiracy talking about intention. You should know you must first have the intention and you must have an appreciation of what you know the result of that planning is going to lead to. You must have an idea about that. So that's why we are saying that you don't have to be at the execution site, the execution site to be a conspirator. Because you know you did that plan. You orchestrated it. You were part of it. You don't have to go appear there again. No. Once you know that and you did not allow me, what up? No. Once we know that you planned it and you knew the outcome of that plan was led to burglary and burglary took place, you are a conspirator. That is what the law says. These people are sending people all over the doing business with you all, you're passing around. The people for them to be here about corruption, 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 they must have entered the system already and they know how corruption is taking place. They know who's leaving who. Look at what happened the last time at EIWA Junction. Something happened there. Police, you saw them protecting Lebanese men and carrying him to Farmington Hotel and they kept police. You think what the people would think? Are you not protecting criminals? They will know that some kind of thing happened somewhere. Look, I know what kind of country we have so. Then when they put right there, the people come and alarming, corruption, corruption, corruption. We don't see it. And we just think that they get talking out of the blue. No. Just shine your eyes. For him to the wise is quite sufficient. Data roaming. Orange data roaming. And of course, uh, they've done it again. And that's it. Let's take this break and we'll be right back. They have done it again. Excitement. Share the good news. Man, the to go yesterday. And he's still calling me on a number. He's still pressing on the heart. Nothing makes me more relaxed than being able to work and stay connected without interruption, whether I am at home or away. They have to thank you. you. <laughs> more travels, more possibilities. With a just release roaming data bundle for travelers to Cote d'Ivoire and Guinea Conakry, you can now stay connected on the go. Dial star 535 hash to activate a plan ranging from $1 for 25 megabytes to $20 for 1 gigabyte. The new roaming data bundle, an offer for you, brings you closer to what matters. Orange. All right, right here on this diet on uh, Freedom 87.9, 95.7, and uh, we're right here on this diet. Great idea. We are all here together. And um, this is it, right here. So let's get to the lines. And so I will give call us. I will try to take a break quickly and then get on to Omen Sam Sion. And let's hear from uh, Grand Stopper. This message for us is very much good, at least. Citizens will know how to proceed, especially making some intervention on their own behalf though let's get to the lines and talk to this caller hello how are you doing the first caller hello david Koti, my name david Koti, how are you doing thank you uh i hope when you were talking about former lawmakers who didn't do anything you're not talking about me <laughs> uh -huh. 
All right. Teacher Light, thank you again. Uh, normally, we don't ask you questions in the class, but I'm going to ask you two questions today. Okay. If you want to answer them, it's up to you. You don't want to answer them, that's your business. Question number one. During the early administration, why did we spend 480 million US dollars for the rehabilitation of the hard road? Hmm. We need to get that answer. If you know the answer, give it to the class tonight. If you don't know it, please invite people from LEC to answer that question. We want to know. The European Union, the American government, and other people spent 480 million US dollars for the rehabilitation of the hard road. Mm -hmm. And up to today's date, here in Morovia, or Broadville, where we have the hydro, we don't even have light poles around here. That's number one. Number two, why do people go to school? Is it just for show off, to be turning around telling people I graduated from Harvard, from Manchester, from the Universal Library, from Cottington with masters, to be bluffing around? Or the purpose of going to school is to make a difference in your life and the lives of other people. What is the main reason? I'm asking the court, this country is not sure about people. We have had thousands, if not millions, of book people in this country from 1847 up to now. Degrees upon degrees from all kinds of places. But yet, this country is still living in the 15th century. We're still so backward. A typical example is about the hard road. In 1961, May 25th, when John F. Kennedy announced that he was going to make sure that America sent people on the moon, they did not just plan to send those three men, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins on the moon to go and die there. There was a plan that when they get there, they must be able to come back to Earth safely. John F. Kennedy said it. And those three men went there and came back safely. Was the hard road repair for that amount just for us to be suffering here today with camera light? Even those who have the electricity, when you get it two months, uh, I mean, when it comes up for one week, two months, it's off. I mean, what is the main reason for the hard road? I listened to you this evening. When that airport was built, I'm giving this example of the moon because I want to know whether the airport was built only for us to see one frame there or all other things were supposed to be done. We spent 60 million. If you were going to spend up to 100 million to make sure that this electricity thing is set up, is the saw, I think it was going to be better. This country is national book people, they've been here thousands. Sure, but what, what has happened to us? Still living in the 15th century. Really? I, I pray for this government to do something with this airport issue. But one more advice I got for the government. Mr. President, if you're listening, please do not put any 300,000 in that budget for Eula. No. Concentrate on LEC, the airport, and other important issues here. We don't want any money in the budget for Eula. They are good friends of ours. I love them. Sure. They are all my sure. But let's concentrate on this country right now. Thank you. Thank you, David Koti, for your contribution. We appreciate that. And let me get on to the next caller. Right here, Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, AB. Thank you so much this morning. Mm -hmm. I, you make a lot of sense. And I, I really appreciate you for your topics on our discussion this morning. Mm -hmm. I, I firstly know that in Liberia, we have no planning ministry. We plan for nothing. We just get up today and just do something today. Mm -hmm. Where we live today, everything they do here, we have to plan for the future children, for our incoming children, for the inborn children. But Liberia doesn't plan anything. We only do things for today. You were saying that they use 60 million for that airport. About 1,150 kVA generator. Have you investigated that? Have you checked? What is it true? Hmm. Well, I read mean that. A lot of our people they put in position, they have the intention, clear the intention that if I go and work in the government, I'm going to stay. A mm -hmm. lot of them believe that they are degree the God. It's beyond the backyard. They are like a uh, degree reserved. The one we have, I'm a reserve here, everything reserved here. That's the same way some of them, they put them out of school here. 
Because when they stay in one class, over and over, they put them out, they go back in the country, and lots of people, they say they can do this, they can do that. They don't do nothing. I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. And I, I have serious issue. Uh, I'm going to tell you this morning that we we'll face we will face problem in the next twenty or thirty years from now. Seti brother product he fixing the building material like steel. Every inch by 2030, 2040, the 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 building collapse that will be in Liberia. It will be a natural disaster. The substance of, of thirty dollars, the steel one you facing, even the nails. If you check, if you, you was a little child, I was a little boy. Those that when you put nails on a zim, on a house, it was still there until the zim got rotting, the nails but will still be clean. Mm. But now when you put the nails on a house, it only take you sometimes one release, see, all the nails will work away. The, the same thing with the steel rock. If you check Sergio Brothers steel rock now, it's somewhere 34 feet, somewhere 35 feet, somewhere in less than that, I mean, even 34 feet. And the, the quality, the, the material they're using, those steel rocks are not going to stay alone. Because I can remember somebody pick up five pieces of steel rock. Those that to pick up one steel rock, it take you a time to take it. It will be very, very heavy in your hand. Mm -hmm. But Sergio Brothers products are very, very bad and they not allowing Liberians to take their product from wherever they live to carry the uh, zero in the country. Very exorbitant and they are not well prepared. Thank you so much this morning. Thanks, my brother, for your contribution. We appreciate that. And let me get on to the next caller. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Good morning, Evie. Yeah, hello, how are you doing? Yeah, morning. Yeah, morning, Evie. I'm rich. I see in a call from Australia this morning. Yeah, how's it going, boss? Let's listen to you. Uh -huh. Look, KB, let me say something to you. Like, first thing, I, I want to comment on your on your on your April Fool message. I'm messing that it broke my heart. I know, yes, I was driving when I saw that thing on April. When I saw that thing, I was like, "What are you talking about?" I had to park my car on the side of the motorway <laughs> and said, "They may want to kill somebody." <laughs> but now, let me just go to the issue, AB. Uh, Look, AB, let me tell you something today. I'm not happy for lawmaker to die. But this is the reason why when the lawmaker, when they leave power, they die premature death. Let me just give you one case with you are bearing a young man, a young man who was in power, who just left power recently, die. And it's really frustration. When they are into power, they don't make laws that will benefit them after they have left power. More early than today, they not. Do you know the breaking about the airport that the new party built? They only want to accept the good things, but then when the plane can't, they don't want to take it. There is no way in the world you would build that kind of airport and you run that airport on generator. Nowhere in the world. This country that we live here in AB, for electricity to go, I don't know. Since I came to the country, it only happened once. And that was five, five minutes. It was like somebody was dying. If I talk about international airport. And then the former president is making mockery out of it. Look at her son, like you were saying, the DYC. The people, is this thing is in their DNA. They never do things for lasting legacy. It is in their DNA. They put their people into, into position to only accumulate wealth for themselves and their children. After they leave government, other than fly out of the country, they go live in other countries. Now the suffering left for the poor people in Liberia. It is wrong. This government needs to change that narrative. Today, if they want to fix anything on our airport, let it be everlasting. Let it be a last, last legacy that people can say, oh, the president, we are in power. Sure. This is what he did. So you can, you can be seen directly. We just begging them. If you put your country first, you will not suffer. Because well, when you leave power, when you leave power, you will still benefit from those things that mm -hmm. you put into place. Mm -hmm. So if our early coming up for OOC and our airport go down, that is she will talk and she will talk to you. And she, 
which she just make she just make that statement to the right place at the right time. Because even in Australia, after they left, they, they come here and how they call it, they left, they went to America. They have, you have to die in America before they pin the party to Ladio. It's just wrong. They could not have any uh, mind for that country. That's why they leave out when they go to America, they go to sit down there, they enjoy the same when they die in the pin the party battle of Ladio. Sure, sure. It's so sorry for AB. Thank you so much for having me. All right, boss. Thanks so much for your contribution as well. We appreciate. Let me get on to the next caller. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, Eddie. Yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, man. This is Leo Pius. So I'm calling from the US. <clears throat> I just, uh, just got in yesterday. <clears throat> no, Eddie. Yeah, no, Eddie. We are the city here. Eh? We are English. Uh, right there, our town. Before Liberia's being self-centered, right? Well, we'll Liberia being self-centered, we'll talk about those in leadership. Before being self-centered, one of Liberia's major problems I feel people every day is the United States of America. Look, so now we have to listen keenly to people when they're speaking sometimes. You heard the history Samuel Johnson gave about our, our legislative problem today to the late to the Bryan government. When they wanted to, to do a study on the hydro, when it came to the year, U.S. to come back for money to do a study, it sounds like a bureau contract with the American government because of $500,000. That once they give that money, they, they can't take no no contract for any other country. It had to be an open bid policy that only American or whoever would have come there, right? Look, I told you every day, I'm living in America here. If America be well for La Bro, La Bro will go up. That broke out the imbalance we see all the time. I don't think you'll be sitting in the internal library. So they start paying for our library. We're not stupid people. But you give our people who rule the country, they don't love the country. Every, every I've been in Labro for more than four months. Well, I just left Labro Saturday. I've come to realize that country will not go nowhere. Labro as a nation will not progress, will not go anywhere. Only individual will progress in our country. I'm being honest with you, my brother. We have, look, imagine this government, we talk for the government, we do the government. Not that we want job from them, not that we want contract from them, but AB. People who we think they are our friends, we need to give them ideas, right? They put them look at you, they see you as a threat. One of the last comments I make a, a comment about the late Julia Berry, right? It's true. If you can't power the after and say they don't make laws that will, that will, that will protect them tomorrow, they, they're no longer in power. That's the reason why if they leave power, the frustration on them so much that so many of them go way war. Today, Ellie is making a statement that she should be seen by herself. Even if Ellie have put the records of McKinnison in place, will be discussing like being on a laboratory today? Liberia, I'm not a part of Joshua because I've been in Liberia for more than five months or more than four months. I see the poor have been high attention, high attention post. And then they not put high attention for Liberia. How can you build a hard job without any high attention post? And secondly, we keep telling the people, as no NC decide to be the player and be the referee, we now have a legislature in Liberia. You go ahead, Canada. You need to give, you know, outsource the legislature to a private company. Private company, if, they, if for anything, the main agenda is to maximum profit. And if you want the maximum profit, you will give the services that you tell people that you can give. You cannot be the government. You want to raise revenue at the same time. It's not possible. Let me start joking with Liberia. The group of people are in power today. They will leave tomorrow. And I don't ever want to know we're successful. There are only few people in the early government are successful today. The bulk of them, they regret it. They want to get back in power. So the government in power today should Think about after government, not to the in government, the, 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 the democratic uh, party in Labra today, everyone will have the opportunity to be, to be somebody tomorrow. Would it be your country of, of less than maybe five million? That's what I said, million now, because we haven't done any sense of for almost what? Yeah. 10 years. Well, I'm sure I'm about six million people now. And we've got more than six major river crossing in the middle of the country, hitting the Atlantic Ocean. And we still suffer from coming. We did on Abidjan. I remember what EF first on Saturday night we enter Abidjan. The guy said, look at Abidjan letter. I said, yeah. We're talking about passing one smoking. 
Thank you so much for your contribution, my brother. I appreciate everything you've said, and uh, we can only continue these calls. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Yeah, hey. Yeah, how are you doing? Yes. I'm okay. This is Francis Mia. I call you for a time show. Say that again. Francis Mia for a time show at West Point. Yeah, Patrick, go on. Let's listen to you, Mia. Maybe you know the, 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 the government of Liberia will not have to... The government of Liberia will not have to get you the free to fire stone if they were to use fire stone power source for the airport. In the U.S., people that use and how they call it, the solar energy that don't get current from the national grid, mm -hmm. they pay current, I mean, they pay money to the, the power authority. But the money they pay is lesser than the why those that use the national grid pay. So, fire stone is using our river. Is using our water to generate their electricity so they should pay something to the government. What need is the political will. Yeah. We don't need to get that digital free or we don't need to pay extra money to them by using current that is generated from our rivers. Okay, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Liberians are speaking. I like that for sure. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, AB, how are you doing, man? I'm doing fine, boss. Go on, let's listen to you. <laughs> And this is Musa Jibran and a friend from New Jersey. Okay, Musa. Let's hear from you. You see, Ebi, um, our country business is so sorry for. <laughs> and I'm sorry for, yeah, you know, if you want to say sorry for, people who are supposed to set an example and make a difference yeah. they come into power and they mix up. Then the next person come into power, that very person is making more green. Out of the mess they created. It's a sorrowful thing, Ibi. It's a sorrowful thing. For Mana Eddie Johnson Sally to be making more green out of the airport. <laughs> Maybe the airport dark that the reason. I mean, there is no options, no remorse to have gone that rough. Maybe it's disheartening. It's really disheartening. I'm telling you, Evie. I know. Because, man, any justice service is supposed to be pointing to no tangibles, like the airport. Not the building, the, 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 the terminal. Can you imagine even they build the terminal and they put the bridge over where the plane can park? And the, that place it has been expired 50 years. No plane supposed to park there. Hmm. Then you come back, man. You have the gust. Okay. You go to funeral, then you make it more clear on your side. You see that, that, that Liberia? Okay. It's a shame. I know. It's a shame. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. I appreciate it. Let me just take this first. You understand? Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Yeah, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, uh, AB. Yeah, how are you doing, boss? Uh, I'm Abraham Conant. All right? I'm calling from the United States. This is right, my AB. first time calling. Yeah, AB. I'm Long right. time late, no, actually. I know. Um, I'm, I'm completely perplexed. And a bit frustrated. Okay. You understand? I've, I've, especially for those of us that have been away at our country for a little while. Mm -hmm. And owing to all of the investigative analysis that you have propounding on your on your program, mm -hmm. I think it's it, it, it offends everywhere in Liberia. And here are some facts. Firstly, I would just attribute all of the you know how you kind of you sometimes get misplaced aggression. Mm -hmm. This is a situation with the misplaced use of corruption. Okay. Because case in point, you cited two instances, maybe with the hydro and the the, the 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 airport for crying out loud. Let's take the airport into consideration. If you're going to spend about fifty-five to sixty million dollars not constructing the runway 
just the terminal. Mm. And that it cannot be electrified. Now, you're telling me that in five years' time, what have this government corrupted from our airport? Look, did you put the money there? Did you give the money to them to complete it and they never did it? No. You told them that you did the work. Only to put generator on it? <laughs> you talk about a situation. Look, maybe I've lived around for a while. I've seen quite a few presidents in our country to myself. Okay. In Firestone in question, if at all the Peter administration under their leadership, the airport will lose the electricity of the Toronto they were granted. And they did not prioritize that. And to come and dump it on the current government is offensive. And those things that the Liberian needs to be educated about it. Just vociferously. And not just to say it yeah. on a one instant and then let's get it, yeah. you let it go. Right. Because it's a misplaced corruption uh, 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 allegation that continue to propound. For God in heaven's sake, you, you spend, you, you put all of the diaspora money or international money and pump it on the regime. That are you telling me that those things are just for cosmetic purposes, A.D.? They're not cosmetic. Those, we're talking about durability of mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. And then you spend, you don't know how many millions of dollars that was spent on the hydro in less than three years. You cannot even supply power with electricity. And people come around and salivate. Oh, yeah, the future government did it. But what's the result? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. So yeah. What is the result? So are you telling me that this money that like you erected it and this government came and broke it down? No. If you write it, people will be benefiting from it. But the money was calling them. And those people, especially in the lives of the previous president, pass around and be decorated and be honored. And they were never questioned for those money. But now that it's because of a judge we are in power, they pass around every low thing, a step of the way. It's corruption, corruption. Corruption and it's like AB when those things are stated over and over, it becomes dramatic and people tend to believe it. Sure. Where's the money that you gave this government to build a hydro in building? I mean, it's, it's, it's very, it's ridiculous and it's offensive. So, I mean, I appreciate your time. All right, I, I know a lot of people. All right, AB. But I truly appreciate that effort. So, okay. keep it up, my brother. All okay, right. Thank you, AB. All right, and uh, it's MC and uh, thanks, AB Conan. And uh, let me get on to this call. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, how are you doing, Abi? I'm doing fine, man. Oh, it, this is Gati. Give me. A, is it me you're talking to right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you I'm talking to. Gati Passori from Canada. Okay, Miss Passori. Yeah, I, I teach. I, I've been in class. I've been listening. I've been trying to do my homework. Um, <laughs> but there was a student who uh, uh, disrupted the class. Uh, that that was maybe to call the attention of the teacher. Okay. I mean, I think like you know, every time I, you know what really. Uh, uh, it's my value to me is when our Liberian people, instead of us, look, this whole thing has been messed up long ago. Instead of us becoming nationalistic now mm -hmm. and find solutions, most people call like they swear in Liberia. That one can really, it, for me, it <laughs> hurt me. How you will call and say a whole country will never rise? Yeah, okay. You know? And you are in that country, you just said you came from there six months ago. How about if you just become a person who loves your country and talk positive about your country? You know, some of these people, they into a, they, with the, even, you know, when you're in a relationship, and like we are in a relationship with Liberia because that's where we were born, that way we were we, we raised, we only came to the white people place to, to, to find another life. And, but this is where we go and we feel good. They cannot where I live in. The moment I come from Liberia, I enter here. All my boom hurting me. When I reach the Liberia, I walk in, get a 10,000 miles, I'm happy. That's where I know I call home. Sure. So I don't care how dirty it is. I don't care how bad it is. I know there are flaws. There are things that are happening long years ago that we need to fix. But please, Liberians, you let's be a little more nationalistic. You let's start swearing our own country. Okay.
Every day we come on the line and say, Liberia will not do this. Liberia will not do this. Our people this. Our people that. How about if we just love our country for once? We come there, we see something that aren't right, we try to face it. Or we stand up. Like, like we do talk on the, on the media. We stand there, we talk for our country. But you're not trying to be li a little more nationalistic than we are. Oh, okay, Please, teach your light. That is why I call. Oh, Please, so much. Thank encourage you so much. them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, encourage the students to be nationalistic to our country. All right, mommy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right, yeah, man. man. You're welcome. <laughs> Let me pick this last one international, then I get to the finish the line and we'll be out of close. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, hello, baby. Yeah. This is, this is William Bro. Hey, Mr. Bro, go on, let's listen to you, too. Yeah, maybe I just call to say thanks to you people tomorrow. A few times we are not on holiday, you know, I'm bereaved. My father passed away. Yeah, how much sympathy, my brother? Yeah, so uh, I'm mooning now, so I'm now on holiday for maybe about four to six months. Wow, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, my father used to be a very big man to me. But you know, I was just a little bit, you know. Uh, they call us to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but I, I, a little bit got a contrary view to that. You see, uh, AB, in a more leaders lead to power, and maybe then there is something good, but they also have, have the limited size whenever they see wrongdoing, mm -hmm. wrong thing going on. I think Madam Sally played her part and she left. I think it's about time that this government, our government, do the right thing by putting that power shouldn't be shot at the airport. In fact, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Sure. It is not a good sure. thing. Sure. Even when Mara Eris said Mara Selly never did it, that doesn't give us the ground to say we shouldn't do it. If I were the president, that people down there to that airport put into a serious meeting, and even fire some of them or even put them down. When they're not ready to control things, they should stop that. They should start taking risks to our country and the lives of people and start fear if that thing can take away a potential investor. Let's like take, for example, Air France. So they should look at that and, 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 and do something good that should work in the interest of our people. Let people okay. be serious around here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you, Chief. And uh, the last quarter, then we close. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Baby. Yeah, hello, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. This is Rebecca calling. Okay, Rebecca. Thank you so much for the topics and thank you for the great work you are doing for our country. Appreciate it. Thank you. The only thing I want to tell our people and my government that I love so much that as I am supporting, most of the time when people criticize you, they want you to do more. And I remember one of the president interview with Jeff. He said that when I left to go to uh, what it in Europe to go play, I used to be the first to go on the practice ground and be the last to leave from there. And when the crowd booing me, said, "Look at me now! I am a president. I can make money. See how I'm looking." But during those days, you come from Gibraltar and they came to Europe. They used to call me names and things. But when they criticize it, and they are booing at me. What I'm looking at is how to put the football behind the, 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 the number five for me to score or go and be able to succeed. Sure. So I just want to encourage, thank you for flagging everything. You no, know, even when you were talking, I just I just said, wow. We got our children, they, they tell God, thank you. Where we didn't reach, you guys are dead. My son. They want to teach us to teach the word. You understand me? So I just put it in a credit side. Yes, if we didn't do it, but we can still do it. We didn't do it from the beginning, but now look at all the ideas that you put together. If we all put ourselves together and we work towards it, we get a better Liberia. So for me, I'm not going to criticize anybody.
I just want to tell you thank you, you know, for breaking all, all the ideas. We are listening, and I know that my president and the government officials, they are all following you. We all can put our ideas together and be able to have a better Liberia. Okay. Thank you so much, Papa. Thanks, man, for your contribution. Folks, that's all the time we have tonight on this very show. And of course, we are grateful to the Almighty God for any on this note. So until we are back here, God willing, I can tell you goodbye because goodbye kills the hope of us meeting again. Have a pleasant night.